Welcome to this little live tutorial we're going to be doing here. I am Jessica from Clayshare and I am going to, for your viewing pleasure today, show you how to pull some handles. So I'll be doing that. We're going to be trimming the mugs I threw on Friday's live tutorial and, and testing out the new, I got them still in their box, the new Diamond Core Tools trimming tools. So I'm going to be testing those out. Um, and I think that's it. I think so. I think that's all I'm going to do. I think that's enough. Uh, if the handles are dry enough, we will put handles on, but usually in the way I work in my process is I will pull my handles and then I will trim my mugs and then I will attach my handles. And usually things don't go according to plan, but we'll see what happens today. <laughs> all right, so I hope you're all having a great weekend. I hope you're having a good studio Sunday, Sunday fun day, some little, um, you know, Sunday self-care maybe, Sunday pottery day, all that. So I have a bowl of water here that I'm going to be using for pulling the handles. Now, I have tutorials all over the place on how to pull a handle. So if you want something a little more formal, I have plenty of class, very casual, all of my live broadcasts are. So if you're looking for a more formal thing, that's not today. Today is just hanging out in the studio and that's it. So I have rolled some coils just quickly. Um, I would say they're a quarter of a pound of clay. Yeah, let me get, let me get four of them and let's see. Yeah, I would say four of them equal a pound. So I would say it's a quarter of a pound is what I use. And I have a three-step pulling method um, that I use to, to pull my handles. And I teach many people how to pull handles that struggle. So this is a great thing if you're struggling to pull handles, you're gonna wanna try this. I think this will help you all out. And I gotta fix, I adjusted lighting when I came in. There we go, that's a little better. So, hey from everybody, hey in Texas, hi from Ohio. Who else is on here? Good morning from Carson City, Nebraska. Everybody else joining in, I'm here in Vermont. Yesterday we had an amazing day. It was 60 degrees, it was sunny. We planted things in the garden. We got our onions in, our peas and our beans. Got three kinds of peas, two kinds of beans. Couldn't put the herbs in because it's still too early because tonight we're gonna get snow. And do I normally trim the next day? I will, yes. Yeah. So I threw these on Friday. Let me pull these out. And we'll talk a bit about process in the studio. I threw these on Friday. And normally what I will do is I will lightly cover them and then trim them the next day. But I knew that Saturday for me, I was gonna be in the garden. So I couldn't be trimming these. So I had to plan accordingly and I covered them really, really well so that I could trim them today for you. So that was the plan. But normally in this normal studio process is I throw one day, I trim the next day. It was just a little different this, this week, that's all. So Hudson Valley, New York, woohoo, it's not so far from me. So let's get going, we're gonna start pulling. Get going and start pulling. Hello from Qatar and Texas. We got all kinds of people out there today. So I will start by getting my coil wet and then I do three pulls, three different hand positionings. So we have a thumb pull where you grab your handle with your fingers at the back. So I flattened my coil. That's what I basically just did when I did my first pull. Do a thumb pull, so pull straight down. Usually I flip it over and do another pull on the back. And then what I call the scissor pull because you're gonna go in like a scissor and pull. And this will help flatten and lengthen. And then the U, so you make a U with your hands. And this will help bring the sides in and prevent it from getting too wide. So these are the three pulls I do. The thumb pull, scissor pull, U pull, or side pull if you'd rather. Super easy. Hey, Amy. Amy, I have to say I was shocked. We were not friends yet on Facebook. I, you know, I saw that and I was like, how is that possible? How can that be? So we are now because, you know, we, I fixed that situation. So here's one handle, done. Easy, right? Super easy. And we are doing the picture in picture. Let me. Let me try to make sure when I pull the next one, I'm paying attention and that I get you all so you can see it. All right, so after it's pulled, I just put it on another board and I will press down the top of the handle so that I have this little like C that I make. And you might wanna shape it a little more. Let me set this down when I do that. 
and this just lets it set up to start drying. So this is how I will pull a handle and let it set. Now do that seven more times and you'll have eight handles, right? So where else can you watch? Good question, thank you. So I am live on Instagram right now, but I'm also live on my YouTube channel, which is Jessica Putnam Phillips on the ClayShare Facebook page, which is just ClayShare on Facebook, on Vimeo.com. So you can go there and look up ClayShare and you'll find us. And on ClayShare.com. So that's where else we are live. So if you're watching on uh, one of those channels and you want to switch to something else, go ahead. Now on Instagram, it's just a single frontal view. Everywhere else you get a picture in picture. So you get two cameras, two for the price of one. So this is, I don't usually uh, think about it so much, you know, I'll just combine my thumb pulls, side pulls, scissor pulls, and I'll just repeat that over and over until I get a handle about the length I need for the piece that I'm making. One thing I find beginners do when they're starting out is they make their handles too narrow. So you wanna make sure your handle is wide enough because when your mug has a lot of liquid in it, it's gonna be heavier, your hand's gonna be holding it, and you don't want it to be digging into your hand. So wider tends to be better. If you have to err on one side of making, I would go definitely for a wider handle versus narrower. So this is just the start, right? You come out, you pull a bunch of handles, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, ease into your day. Get you motivated to make some stuff in the studio. Now you can always roll a coil and just flatten it and use a, a flattened coil. You do not have to pull a handle. Hi from Connecticut. I see South Africa here. Happy Sunday from Oregon. Yes, it is. Now if your handles are too wet to do the little C that I'm doing off to the side, you can lay them down. I'll do that with this one. I'll show you how to do it here. Sometimes when you're pulling handles, you'll use a little more water than you need and you got to keep your pressure even. If you put too much pressure or pull too quickly, you can actually break your clay. So they're nice, even, smooth. So this one right here, say it's too wet to stand on its own. Look, so I just laid it down. And the great thing about laying it on its side is you can really shape the handle form you want for your mug. So you can really get it down. You pull and the end gets thick and the middle too thin. So I think the, the scissor pull will help you with that. I think you're pulling too hard at the beginning. So you might start off gently and as you get closer to the middle, you put too much pressure on it and that thins it out in the middle. So back off on your pressure, try to keep it even top to bottom and that should help you. So what if the thumb pull never, if you can't get a center thumb? If the thumb pull isn't working for you and you find that the scissor and the side you pull work, you could leave the thumb pull out. The reason we do that is because it's a built-in thumb rest. So this spot right here, your hand will naturally go there. So it'll make a nice handle once you attach it to your mug. And for the mugs I made, I made three great big like stein shapes, and then I made three smaller fat mugs. So all my handles don't have to be the same size. They can vary. How do you know how long to pull the handle? So, so that's a, a good question from Judy Miller. Judy, when I pull handles, it, like I was mentioning, I have different size forms. You're gonna want a longer handle for a bigger form, but you might want a small handle. So it depends. Are you making a handle that will hold three fingers, two fingers, one finger? So it all depends what you're looking for. So if I stop with a little teeny tiny handle about this long, which I would say is maybe three inches, that would be a nice, maybe single, right? Maybe a little long, go a little longer and you get a four. I mean, you get a four inch, which will give you two fingers, right? And I usually go to a six to seven inch long handle for a mug, that's my usual. So if you're gonna pull to length and you wanna measure, that's what I do, is six to seven inches long for a mug. And then of course, these are gonna get trimmed up. So 
if you pull them a little too long starting out, you can fix that. You can go back in and take care of that. Do I press more firmly at the top on the thumb pull? I do, just a little bit, but not much because you really want it to stay even. If you push too hard on the clay, it, it will tear it. Yeah, and it'll make it uneven. So this is my seventh. I made six mugs. I pulled six handles, but the seventh handle is for luck. I always pull an extra one because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what will happen when you're attaching them. You might drop one on the floor. Uh, you might not cover it well enough. It might dry out too fast. Who knows? So it's always good to make that extra handle for luck. Same thing when I'm making lids for thrown pieces. I throw an extra lid just for luck. Okay, put this down on my board. So this one I pulled a lot longer than I need. So I can just pinch this bit here off and recycle that bit. So this is going to sit, I'm going to stand this one up, off to the side over here while we work on trimming. So that's the pulling. Seven handles pulled. Done. Set them to the side. And now we're going we're gonna to trim. So I see Lee's got a wasp system in the mail on the way to you. Awesome. You will love your wasp system. That's made by GR Pottery Forms. It's an attachment you can put on your wheel that will let you put slabs on your wheel and form them to a mold to make dinnerware in bowls. They're fabulous. So your pull usually twists the handle. Just keep your hand still. If you're twisting your wrist while you're pulling, just go slow, steady, and try not to twist your hand while you're doing it. It does take practice, but give it a try and see how it works. All right, so here's one of those little smaller fat mugs that I made on Friday. They're a little sticky. I like to trim my mugs a little on the wet side. I find that it's just better for attaching handles to prevent cracking. So I'm going to mark how far in. I'm feeling on the inside where the bottom is. And I'm using my, my thumb and I'm making a mark so I know I can trim into this point here. And then I'll probably trim my foot about that deep. So I know this stuff between my little marks is what I'm going to trim away. Oh, and we're going to use the new diamond core tools. So this could go awesome or I could totally ruin my pot. We'll find out. So I'm going to get this on center. And just let it spin, lining it up. I can tell where it touches my finger, like if it bumps right here a little too much on one side. I need to scoot it away. So my nail, I usually let my nail be the guide. If it gouges in, see how it's gouging in right there? I'm going to flop it. You need to flop You're going to flop it? All right, so let me show this again. I get asked a lot, how do you know when it's centered or how do you center a mug? You can, if you have a fingernail, take your fingernail and let that be your guide. See how it gouges in right here? So I know it has to push this way. If you don't have a fingernail, a needle tool works great. And you can see how that gouges in too and it leaves behind a line. So you know where that line starts is here and it ends here. So we need to scoot this this way just a bit. And then you just keep checking. And this is a great way to do it when you're beginning so that you don't have to struggle with getting it centered. So that'll work. That's good. And then I do old school trimming here. You could use a Giffen grip or something like that to support your piece, but I just use wads of clay. Just easy. Oh, so you came over from Insta and it's better over here on YouTube. Good. I'm, gl I'm glad. So if you see me looking off to the sides talking, that's because I have iPads <laughs> and a phone set up to catch all the comments from all the different streams so that I can answer your questions. So YouTube comments come from there, Facebook comments come from there, Instagram comes from there, and the main camera is right there. So that's, that's what's going on. All right, so we have this ready to go, this cute little pot. Let's, let's pick a tool from the box. We've got three, and I've never used any. And I know they're sharp, so they'll probably cut really, really well. These are the brand new ones that Diamond Core Tools just came out with. I'm going to go with this one here. This is, oh, I have to look at the sheet. Hold on. I can't remember what they're called unless I look at the sheet that they sent me. 
So I'm going to start with this is the T3 slanted square trimming tool with square tipped handle. The T3. It's not a Terminator movie. It's a trimming tool. The T3. That's what we're going to go with. I know, no flannel. To be fair, Rich, you are correct. It's laundry day. Sunday, I have a big pile of flannels waiting to be washed. Um, hello. Did you all see? I have a dirt dauber. Do you, do you guys know what dirt daubers are? They're, they're like a wasp. Here it is. Here he is, my little friend. Uh, so these guys will sneak into my studio and steal little chunks of my clay pieces. If I don't cover my pots up, I'll find like little, little marks that are like two little lines, like little bite marks, it looks like, where the dirt daubers will sneak in and, and steal my clay off my pots. It's how it is, right? All right, so we're gonna give this a go. Y'all ready? I'm excited for this. I don't know what this is gonna do. It smells good though. It's handmade wooden tool. Has a little bit of a oil smell to it because it's been treated. Nice, very nice. These are really, really sharp. And sharp tools are safer tools. When they're dull, what happens is they tend to catch. Now, one thing I do notice is sharp tools can chatter, and that'll give these little vertical lines on your pieces. And that happens from time to time. So if that's happening to you, change the angle you're holding the tool. You see how I'm supporting it in my hand? I'm holding the tool as I trim, but yet I have my hands touching, my fingers are touching. Now let's trim this excess off here. So I picked the tool that I thought would be my favorite. This tool is most closely shaped to the little Dolan tool that I use the most. Do you see this? See how this one's shaped? This one's shaped very similar. If you look at the fact that it has the straight sides, now it has a little corner, two corners and a little angle on the on the top. So that's why I picked this one because I figured it would be similar to what I already use. Nice. Really nice. Easy. Wow. Yeah, that does a nice job. So I'm really interested to see how long these will stay sharp. Um, I think they'll stay sharp for a while, just based on how sharp they already are. Let's go ahead and do the inside. I always start by marking the line where the end of my foot ring is going to be. So you can see right here, that's the inside edge, that's our outside edge, and now I'll go into the center. If you find, you know, that you're a little unsteady, do you see how my hands are touching? My fingers are kind of holding each other. That's providing a nice support. And I have my elbows in, exactly. I'm always talking about T-Rex arms. When you are a potter, you have T-Rex arms because if you have your elbows flopping out like a chicken out here, you're gonna be unsteady. You're gonna be all over the place. But when you ground them in like this, boom. They're staying, and so you do this, Arr, like that. That's T-Rex arms. Nice, so this is pretty snazzy, woo-wee. Um, so for me, yeah, I, that's nice. Now, what else do we have? That's a curved, hmm. So I usually do a little curved detail on the inside of my foot and I use this great round, hey, do you wanna grab me my little circle from that cup over there on that wheel? Mm -hmm. So I have this other trimming tool I use that I love by Dolan and it's a little circle tool. And this right here, have I tried um, 
No, the tungsten carbide, no, I haven't tried those yet, Lee. I'll have to check those out. So this is just a little Dolan circle. Uh, I would say it's a mm, half inch circle, maybe. I don't know, the number's gone. I don't have a number on it. But I usually will use this right in here for this detail that I do, this inward curve detail I do on my mugs. These diamond core tools, they don't have one that does that. So I still will want to keep using this. And I will try the others on the other mugs. So let's go ahead. Sure. So I'm just trimming little spirals. Best part ever is when you get those little spirals. Love them. I always want to save them and make earrings or something out of them. I think they'd be great for that. Everything's good on this. This is trimmed. So once I've finished the trimming, I'll take a damp sponge and I will just smooth away any lines that are from the trimming tool, smooth the side, round over the edges. You want to make sure there's no sharp edges. This is going to, you know, be sitting on a potentially a wooden table at some point. You don't want it to scratch anything up. You're going to be holding it in your hands. You want it to feel nice. You do not want it to be scratchy. So that's one mug. Woohoo! Done. So what tools am I using? This is the T3 tool from Dolan Tools. It's brand new. I'm just testing it out. This is a little half inch circle tool from Dolan Tools. So these are the two companies' tools. That first one was Diamond Core. I'm sorry, Diamond Core. Did I say Dolan? Ah. You're so used to it. For your I am so used to it because I usually just use Dolan. But this is a Diamond Core. This is a Dolan. Diamond Core, Dolan. Ds. Got to got to have all these Ds. All right. So once the mug is trimmed, I will sit it just like this, rim side down on a board off to the side, and I will let it stiffen up. So let's grab another one, put that one over there. And if you watch me throw these, you'll know that I throw on these little bat inserts right here because it's so easy to just sit them on the shelf without touching your mug. You don't have to distort it. Do I sharpen my tools or get new ones? Well, the truth is the Dolan tools are so inexpensive, I usually dull them within a two to three years. I just buy new ones. But you can sharpen them, yes, you can. But usually I just replace them. Um, actually, I got this one four years ago. I did not sharpen it ever and I'm still using it and it's my favorite tool. They don't make this. This was a special edition that I picked up at an Inseca conference. And um, we're working together, Dolan and I, we're going to make this tool happen as a regular line item, I guess. It just hasn't happened yet. All right, let's get this centered. All right, I'm going to roll you back to the top because that's really good. where the action is. What do you guys think? Are you still loving the two cameras, the picture in picture? I'm loving that because. Sometimes you want to see the position of my body and how I'm sitting when I'm trimming, you know, my posture. And you definitely want to see the hands and what's going on there, right? There. Now we're centered. Just use our little coil wads here. So let's trim with this one. This one is the other diamond cord. Well, I got three. So this is the half dome trimming tool with paddle handle. This is the T1. And let me put the T3 back. I need my sh Sharpie. You got a Sharpie on you? It's okay if not. I was going to write T3 on the, I save these tubes and I actually write what the tools are and put them away so I can keep track of them. Now, something like this would probably be out I wouldn't have it stored in its tube, but for right now, I'm going to keep it in the tube and that way I can reference what it is and I'll know quickly. Good morning, Diane. Hi. So this is the T3 right there. T3 carving tool. And this one is the T1. So by process of elimination, I wrote two, uh, T1 because <laughs> I was thinking two. The other one I have is the T2. Put that down in there. All right. Here we go. How often do I clean my wheel? 
I'll tell you how I clean the wheel. When I get done, this is what I do. Wipe it out like that, pick up all that slop, dispose of it in my reclaim bucket, wheel's clean. That's it, that's how often. So every time I use it, I wipe it out like that, and it takes maybe 10 seconds. Um, if I'm changing clays, I scrub the whole wheel down, but I don't, I don't usually have to do that. When I'm filming classes, I scrub the wheel clean. I want it squeaky clean for classes. So you'll see it look nice and shiny clean every time I start a class. Um, but if you're switching clays, like a dark clay to a light clay, yeah, you definitely want to scrub your wheel really well. Most importantly, when you're going from light, from um, dark to light, because that little specks of dark clay will affect your light clay. All right, let's try this half dome trimming tool. Oh, nice too, has a nice little curve. So the whole point of all this is to test out these new tools. This is giving me a nice curve already. So you know how I do that step where I take the circle and I make that little indentation? This is sort of doing that for me already. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? That is kind of already taking care of that. Hmm. So that's pretty much the foot done. So when you trim, the pot wants to lift up so you don't know what you're doing wrong, Judy. You need to seat it better. You see how I have these wads of clay right here? You need to make sure your wads are firmly stuck on your bat or wheel head. You might have to get your bat damp, but you need to adhere your pot down. If it's pulling off, it's, it's not seated well enough. Also, if you're gouging in too deeply, sometimes that can cause it. So this, this one's nice. Uh, what I really like about it so far is the fact that I'm getting that little curve that I like to do in one motion at the same time as I'm trimming it. That's interesting that I'm able to accomplish that with one tool instead of two. Could be a time saver. Hmm. More to explore. So now I'm going to trim any excess off. Sometimes when you're throwing pots, it's perfectly normal to have them a little thicker at the bottom. Oftentimes you want them to be thicker when you're throwing so that you can trim away the excess. And also as you go bigger, they need to be thicker so they can support what's above it. Not a lot thicker. I'm not, cra I'm not saying crazy thick, just a little bit. So this, hmm, yeah. Interesting that it works as a two in one. I like that. I like that a lot. Or did I see what wheel is this? This is a Bailey Pro XL wheel. What's a good way of, of guessing how wide a foot ring should be? Well, it all depends on what's going on inside your pot. And I did show when I went to trim the other one, what I was doing is you put your hand inside and you measure with your fingers. You just feel where the wall meets the bottom and then you just go on the outside and you make a little mark. So that's, that's how you can gauge that. And the little band here, that is actually the ring it becomes. Smaller pots have smaller rings, bigger pots will have a bigger ring. I usually, for something like this, this is about a quarter of an inch, that's a good size. If um, you're making a really big piece, you know, you're gonna wanna make it a little bigger than that. But it has to look like it belongs. A lot of what we do in pottery is by eye. You know, it has to look right. And if it looks like they're too big, Make them a little smaller. If you notice they look like they're a little too tiny, make them a little bigger. Let's trim this off. Tapping it because I can tell by the different tones. If it's thicker here, then it's thicker here. I just want the same tone across, that's all. And it sounds the same to me. Ah, one tool, one tool trimming. First time ever for me. That's the T1. I, I'm pretty impressed with it, I gotta say. So 
smoothing everything. Smooth over those edges. Pot done. Another one done. And so I just scoop all my trimmings into uh, the corner over there. I just kind of scooch them that way. And I'll clean this all up after. But again, it'll be that same thing. I'll just take my hands and just scooch it all out and put it in the reclaim bucket. And that's it. So we'll set this one to the side. Let's see. Do we have more? Some of these are, I covered them a little too well. I think this one will, let's see. This one may come off. It might not. It might need to sit a little longer. If they're too wet and you go to trim them, what happens is they mush. So you'll, you'll, you'll actually mush the bottom down instead of trim in. But a good gauge is if it comes off the bat easily like that did, you're pretty good. You're set to go. So this is one of the taller ones. And what was I talking about to measure how you make your foot ring? Put your hand inside and feel where the bottom touches the wall. So where the bottom is, is coming to the wall. And then you can actually kind of gauge it. It's about there. So I make that mark there and then I'm going to trim about that much up. So I have a little guide. And I'm going to get my wheel head just a little damp with a damp sponge. That'll help my little wads of clay to stick. If your wads are flying off, that's because you need to get your wheel head damp. Or your bat, whatever you're using, doesn't matter. You can trim on a bat, you can trim on um, the wheel head directly. Uh, I don't usually use like foam or sticky bats for cups or tall things because the wads won't stick to them. If you have a Bailey Quick Trim or a Gip and Grip and you love it and you want to use it, you can use it. There's no reason not to. So I'm just getting this centered. Sometimes what takes the longest is getting the pot centered. I know some people smack on center. I, I try that. <laughs> it's more, I smack the pot off the wheel. So I'm, and I know I could get it if I wanted to practice, but after 20 years of doing it the way I do it, I'm not sure I will actually change the way I work. Um, maybe. And sometimes they just don't want to center at all, no matter what you do. Like, you fight with it. And then you just get to the point where you're like, you know what? This is good enough. We're going with it. There we go. Watching a potter center a pot for trimming is like watching paint dry sometimes. That's gonna work. And then you get to the point where you're like, yeah, that's good enough, we're going. Your ceramic student in high school and just discovered my channel. Awesome, good, I'm glad it's helpful for you. Good, and, and you know, right now I'm not sure if you're actually able to go to class, but if you're not able to go to class, this is a, a really good way to keep technique fresh and to see what's going on and give you ideas of what you can work on when you are able to get back to class, right? Give you some, some things to work towards. Now, let's try the next one. This is the T2 trimming tool. So far, mm, do I have a favorite? Um, I, I like the T3 shape because it's my traditional angle, but I like the, that the T1 is a two in one. That's pretty cool. Come on, you. Ooh, so when you buy these, they come with an extra blade. And I will tell you, they are very well made. They're handmade. They are not, not cheap. They're on the higher end for a trimming tool. Um, I'm going to contact Diamond Core Tools and see if we can do a little something, get a little deal or something going for our Clay Share members. That would be nice. So this is the one that's a curve, that little curve. And still, they're all very, very sharp. Any clay water management for home studios without running water or a clay trap? That's such a good question for me because I have worked in the studio for 14 years without running water. And I've managed my clay and water reclaim throughout that time. So I keep five gallon buckets in the studio 
And what I will do is my reclaim will get poured in one five gallon bucket for reclaim. And then as the water comes to the top and the clay settles to the bottom, I'll, pull, I'll pour the water off into another bucket. And that's basically just wastewater. And you could just pour that out. Now, I would let it, if you're gonna pour it down a sink, settle another and then pour it through, um, if you need to pour it through a filter or something. I pour mine outside. I, I live in the middle of nowhere, Vermont. It's just mud. I pour the water outside. Now, they do make a thing called the sink, which is something for managing glaze and clay bits. And it's a really handy thing, but it's really pricey. So I have not uh, invested in that. But I've been using no water in the studio, no running water in my studio for over a decade. Uh, would I like running water? Of course, but it, it works. So this one is good. It's not the right one for mugs though, I'll tell you. The, the T2, um, for me it's not right. Let's just see, let's just see what I can do with it. I'm gonna use the very corner. Maybe I can get it to work. Yeah, okay, we're going, we're going. So what happens is over time we all get used to certain tools and working certain ways. So when we get something new like this, we, we have to approach it differently than we normally would. It's working. Oh, see, now it's doing a beautiful job. So what I've found is I have to use this edge, this corner, to get in there and trim it the way I want to. I really like a sharp corner when I trim. I like to have a really sharp edge where this transition is on the foot. That's why I like this little corner here. It has a corner here, but it's, it's a little harder to get to. So this one, let's see. Yeah, see that one gets in there and really makes that undercut that I'm going for beautifully. I'm thinking this one's gonna end up being my favorite. Yeah, it's nice. Now, yes, you can use this for the inside. I just feel like it's too wide for the inside of a mug. We can give it a try. I am gonna switch to this right here to get my profile in my foot for the outside there. I'm loving this one. I'm absolutely loving the T1. All right, we're going to try the uh, T2 here for the foot ring. Mm, it's good, though. So I think it depends what shapes you like. These are all ribbon loop tools, versions of them. And I think what you're most comfortable using, you know, look at what you like to use now for a trimming tool. What shapes are you most drawn to? What are you trying to trim? And I think that will determine what trimming tools you should go with. I like this one. I think for big bowls and stuff, this, or if I wanted to create a really gorgeous curve, this could do that for a large curve. But I tell you what I love about this one is, let me grab them all out. I'm gonna talk about all three of them together. So if I was gonna buy one tool, because I think a lot of people are like, I'm only gonna buy one tool, which, yeah, that, that, I agree. So we have the T, let me get them right. <laughs> I have to look at the list. I wanna make sure I don't mess it up because I don't wanna tell anybody the wrong thing. So you have the T1, that's the half dome. That's the one I'm really loving the most is the T1. The T2 is the arc. That's nice. It's a nice, smooth trimming tool. And then the T3 is the slanted square, which I love as well. But if I was only gonna go with one, I would get the T1 because you get that corner of the slanted square here and you get this arc on the dome, the half dome that you get on the arc. So these two, like, sorta had a baby and you get this one right here. But if you know you like arc-shaped trimming tools, this one would be the one to go with. 
If you know you really like square trimming tools, then this would be the one to go with. So I think that's um, a good breakdown for it. I'm gonna go in with this one and finish my trimming on this little mug here. Wow, it's off center. You can trim off center, totally, obviously, because um, I'm doing it. Is it ideal? Not really, but it works. But I don't let things like stop me from doing what I want to do. So if I'm fighting with a cup or a mug and it won't center, I just reach a point where I'm like, okay, don't center. Fine. You don't have to. I'll still trim you. So let's see, how, oh, sunny Florida's here, nice. Buckets of water will help you, right. And so I, for not having water in the studio, I also keep a bucket of clean water for washing my hands and washing my tools off with. That way I don't have to bring it in the house. I never bring buckets of water or buckets of clay or any of that into my house. I never put that into my own plumbing. Because I live in the woods, I can take that water that might have clay in it and I can, I can dump it. And it, it's just clay. There's nothing bad in my clay. I don't have to worry about it contaminating any kind of aquifer or anything at all. That's, that's not a concern for me with these. It's because the clay I use is, you could eat it. I don't think you want to, but you could. All right, so do you all have any questions about these diamond core tools or trimming in general? perfectly balanced. You can tell you've trimmed it correctly when you pick it up in your hand and you can hold it and you can find the balance. It's even the thickness you can actually feel. I remember when I was first making pots and when I made the first one that I threw evenly and trimmed evenly and I picked it up and I was like, ooh, you know. It's not anything you can explain. You just feel it. And, you know, I always will pick something up and if it's a little bottom heavy, I'll be like, ooh, I can tell that's a little bottom heavy and it might need a little more trimming. Some pieces you want bottom heavy. Perfect segue for tomorrow's new class coming out on tv.clayshare.com, which is a wheel throwing class. We're making a no trim vase. It's a vase, you don't have to trim. Pretty self-explanatory and it is bottom heavy and it's meant to be bottom heavy because you want it to not tip over when you have it full of water and your flowers you can put a great big flower arrangement in it and not worry about it so that will be coming out tomorrow by about noon I think that will class will load up so this will just sit and wait till it's ready for me to put the handles on the handles we can check them but I can tell you they're a little too wet you can do a little handle check so you're firing a face planter using the Jungle Gems. Cool, awesome. I have not tried the Jungle Gems from Mako. I do use Mako's glazes, but I haven't used the Jungle Gems, which are actually their crystalline low fire glazes that you can take up to cone six and they run and melt and look beautiful, but I haven't tried those. So the handles, you can see how they're still really shiny. They're, they're, they're too wet. So these will need to sit a little longer. And if it ends up being that my trimming is taking longer than I expected, what I will do is I will drape plastic over this and I will let them sit with plastic over it. And that way I can wait like two, three hours before I put them on. What you don't want is them to dry out so that when you go to bend it, let's pretend this is a handle. You wanna be able to bend it and flex it without it cracking. So as long as it's still wet enough to do that and they are, they are, we may, it's a little wet. Mm, we can try to put one on, we can try. It's a little wet, but we'll try. Here, we'll take this one. I think that's the first one I pulled. We'll try to put that one on. Uh, I need a couple things. I need my Dolan clay knife out of my, from hand building. And, oh no, it's right there. Um, and I need my little color shaper that's right there too. You see those? And I need my flour cookie cutter, which I think's in there. We're gonna, let's put a, let's put a hand, let's get a handle on it. Let's do it. We'll do this little guy right here. The first one we trimmed. 
handle's still a little soft, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. Do I ever alter my pieces with darting? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Um, I will do darted mugs, but these are too dry for darting right now. If you wanna dart your mugs, you need to do them before they're trimmable. They need to be wet. So you will throw them. I usually will wait till later the same day. So if you throw them in the morning, wait until that afternoon and then you dart them because they have to be pretty wet to dart. And then I trim them later. So the trimming comes after I dart them with a clay that's porcelainous like this bee mix here. If you try to dart them at this point, it's gonna crack. It's gonna break and crack. There's not, there. it's way too stiff for me be, to be able to manipulate and shape this the way I'd want to. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't dart them now. But um, have I done any wheel thrown darting classes? I've done hand building darting classes. I don't think I've done a wheel thrown darting class. I make wheel thrown darted mugs from time to time in vases. I just, I don't think I've taught a class on it. I can put that on the list. All right, so I'm trimming up my handle. I'm trimming off some excess from the top. And I'm just gonna line this up to see if I have the length I want. And I think I do. So, ah, oh, let me grab my ruler. <laughs> I got my little wear card over here. Come here, you. All right, how long is this handle? First of all, it's way too wet because I can flex it so much. But this is a five inch handle. So five inch is what I have for this mug. Let's check and see. I think that's gonna work. It could be four and a half inches and it would be fine. And then I like to shape my handles. And because I'm gonna be doing, actually I need that larger cookie cutter that you had. Neither one of them are my real one that I use. I don't know where it is. Is there's not another in there? That one's way big, but it'll work. Um, so I'll shape them because this isn't a handle that's supposed to look like it was pulled on the mug or that it grew out of the mug. It's supposed to look like an attachment. It's supposed to look like an embellishment. So I will go ahead and highlight that and make that part of the design. What is darting, Liz? That's a very good question. So darting is just like in sewing, if you cut a piece of fabric out so you can bring pieces together in a dress or in a shirt, you do that with clay, you will take a chunk out and then bring it together, You'll, and so it nips it in, and it can make a cute little nipped in piece. Now do I have any, looking behind me, no, no that's extruded, that wasn't darted. Do I have anything darted in the studio right now? <sighs> I don't think I do. Um, I think I'm all out of darted mugs, which I was just thinking about making. You know what, if you go to this website, batandkillpottery.com, You'll see these beautiful carved mugs that are blue and brown. Those are my mugs. It, it's my website, one of them. And those set of four mugs were darted. And I don't have any more right now, just so y'all know. But I do need to make some. Those are my lotus mugs. I don't have any. I have to make some. But I, I'll get on that. <laughs> So my studio, I see some people are asking, are located in, it's located in Arlington, Vermont, the southern part of the state, sunny southern Vermont. Oh, I need a serrated rib. Has anybody got a serrated rib that let me borrow? It's over there in my dish. Just put it out there and see if one comes back, right? If only somebody could give me a serrated rib. Woo, look at that. There it is. Okay, so you're gonna slip and score your handle. So this is the shape we have. Cute, right? Look at that. It's not that big. It's not supposed to be huge because it's not going on a huge mug. So we want it to be in proportion to the mug it's going on. And I'm just gonna line it up and I'm gonna press it on there just to see if I like how that's gonna look. I do. And so I'll pull the handle off and it will leave behind a bit of slip so I know the positioning. And then I just really score that area. And now make sure your hands are dry when you're attaching your handle. If you have wet, slippy, dirty hands, you will have a difficult time sticking the handle on. And also you can leave lots of little clay, clay crumbs on your piece and you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna line the top up. 
And then I'm just going to press in. Press in. Kind of rolling motion. So I'm not crushing, I'm rolling. And then down here at the bottom, just pressing it on with the thumb gently. And then I'm going to take my finger, I'm just going to roll. So I'm rolling up, rolling up, rolling out. You'll see sometimes a little bit of slip come out. That's normal. That's exactly what happens. Then I'll take this tool, which is called a color shaper. It's a little rubber tip tool. It's actually silicone, I believe. But I use that to go around and collect a slip right there. Let me get my sponge. And clean that up. And I do the same thing on the top of the handle here, all the way around, cleaning up any slip. And if you didn't make this shape, I call it a little dog paw, or a little mitten shape handle, you don't have to have the ends look like that. But cleaning off the slip is one of the ways to prevent cracking. When you leave slip and wet clay material on an attachment like a handle, what happens is that area doesn't dry as fast as the others, and it pulls apart, and you'll get a crack. So now we shape it. So I'll usually just look at my, see how I'm just adjusting. Try different shapes, you know, try making a little more tighter, close to the body, pressing down a little bit, a little fatter. You, know, you just play with this until you get it where you want and you'll find a shape that you will like. And after it's finished, you can test it and see if you like the way it feels too. And if you notice after you've made your handle that, you know, it's not quite wide enough. It's too narrow. Next time you make handles, keep that in mind. Make them a little narrower. If it's, if it's too wide, make it narrower. If it's too narrow, make it wider. Those are all just things that you will learn over time in using. You should use your pots. You should make pottery and you should use your own pottery because that's how you know what other people are feeling when they use your pottery. And so the last step after I've got it on is I'm just going to smooth the entire thing out with a damp sponge, making sure I don't have any little dig marks from my fingernails, any little clay crumbs that are on there, any bumps, all those things take care of that. Smooth it off and it's done. Now I will cover this up. I will let it dry slowly, um, usually for a week or two. And sometimes, a lot of times, uh, I will wax the handle. I'll wax where the handle attaches to the mug. I'll wax the, wax the entire handle and that'll help prevent it from drying too fast and from cracking. Now, if this is something I wanna put a slip on or a wax on to carve, I'll let it set covered overnight and then tomorrow I'll put that wax on or that slip on. You wanna let the handle cure and sit. Also, look at your handles from above. See how we need to just slightly adjust, just slightly adjust that handle so it lines up there. All right, so there's a mug with a handle. Easy, right? Make some mugs, trim them, put a handle on it. <laughs> all right, so that's what I got for you all today. And uh, pulled some handles, uh, tried out the new diamond core tools, trimming tools. Uh, my favorite definitely is the Half Dome T1. This one right here, I love this one. The others are very nice. Uh, I think if I was gonna get a second one, gosh, how would I pick? Probably this one, probably the angled square. Um, and that was the slanted square, the T3, and then the arc. Now, I don't know if they're gonna do a kit where you can get all three and save. That would be cool, right? Because one trimming tool is never enough. I have, I don't know how many, <laughs> But I have many containers like this, many jars floating around that are full of trimming tools. Um, Y'all see this cart right here? <laughs> That's only a fraction. And last summer I cleaned the studio out. And last summer, and there's shelves down there and you know, lots. I donated to my intern a ton of trimming tools, boxes of tools, boxes of stuff um, because I had some that I've been hanging on to for like 15 years and you don't need that many, but you do need more than one tool, I think, right? 
So does the wax burn off in the bisque fire? Yes, it does. And yours is leaving a residue behind, David. So I don't know what you're using for a brand of wax. I have noticed on dark clay bodies, like dark brown and black clay bodies, the wax will leave a residue behind. On a porcelain or on a B-mix or a light clay body, I haven't noticed the residue at all. But I have noticed it on Laguna's number 60, their speckled tan. But once I glazed, the glaze went on fine and there was no difference once it was glazed. It just had a weird discoloration when I took it out of the kiln. And I'm not sure what that was after bisque firing, but it was fine after glazing. So do me a favor, test it out or, or, or tell me now, did you test it and it's affected the way the glaze looks? If that's the case, you might wanna find a different wax. Yeah, that would be the, the solution too with that. All right, I think, I think that's all we got now. So you are welcome, Lisa. Everybody have a fabulous day. Enjoy it, whatever you're doing, you know. Do something for yourself. Take, take some time, whatever it is, maybe read a book, maybe just sit and look at beautiful scenery, make some pots, watch some pottery making videos, bake some cookies, I don't know. Do something, enjoy yourself, you know, do it for you because you know what, you deserve it. All right, everyone, I will be back on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for Live at 5. I'm gonna be throwing on the wheel because this whole week is wheel week for me. So we'll be making more pots on the wheel and guess what? You tell me what you want to learn how to make and I'll make it on Live at 5. So this is your chance to send me messages, leave me comments on the video, say, hey, I wanna see how you make fill in the blank. Tell me what you want and I will see if I can make it happen. I won't be able to make like 400 pieces, but give me some suggestions and I will do my best. All right, everyone, be well, stay safe, make great pots, and I'll see y'all Wednesday.